Is there new Asian American slang being created right now? Let's talk about it. Yeah, or is there just memes about ABGs at EDC and FOBs at KTV? Let's run a clip from the AZN days. In the Integra and Civic, switching phone lanes with the pedal down, peeling out, racing in a thing. Boom, listen guys, we're about 20 years removed when people used to argue over the definition of AZ on UrbanDictionary.com, Andrew. We made a video about this eight years ago. They have has like a million views. And basically, somebody on Reddit was wondering, uh, because they're from the Midwest, they're not familiar with these terms, and they're basically wondering where these terms come from. Are there any new ones being created? And if somebody can organize them for them. All right, guys. Well, guess what? That's what we're here for. We're going to try to do a good job of talking about the current, the past Asian American slang that we talked about years ago, and also maybe some new terms that have kind of popped up. And then you also let us know in the comments down below, what are some other slang terms we might be missing that are used mostly amongst the Asian American population. Right, you're saying new terms that have entered the AAPI lexicon. Yeah, let's just go through some of the ones that most people know. Okay, ABC for American born Chinese, ABG, we get that, ABB. But, but, but you know the funny thing about ABG is some people don't even know fully what it means. Right, is it Asian baby gangster or is it Asian baby girl? Okay, you have ABB, with this, which is Asian baby boy. You have FOB, of course, you have... Uh, CBC, I've heard, is which is Canadian born Chinese. But, that, but you have to be kind of Chinese to know those terms. Yeah, yeah. Especially like Cantonese, like if you go to Hong Kong and you meet these people. And, yeah, and, I am a CBC or yeah. ABC. Uh, Asian glow, Asian flush, I feel like is still more within the community. Yellow fever, 50 50 internal to the community, but obviously. When you talk about yellow fever, you, you're probably mostly Asian. I feel like that term is kind of like going out of vogue. Maybe. Uh, AZN. I still use that term, but I know a lot of people think it's cringe. Uh, FJ, that's a New York term. Um, Ricer, uh, David, you've seen some people use the abbreviation E-E-A-A-O for everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes, there is a certain, I would say, I guess like art crowd that really likes Asian indie movies, and they would call it that all the time. They would abbreviate everything, everywhere, all at once. Right. So I guess we want to ask the question, like, David, I think a lot of these terms... They did originate from Southern California or at least California, possibly the Bay Area as well, but probably Southern California. So do you think like, why does it seem like the slang usually comes from SoCal? I would say that almost all of the Asian American slang that spreads across America is from SoCal. For example, Andrew, Fujianese people are called FJ in New York, but that's almost something that only the Chinese know about, maybe some people a little bit outside of that, but that would never spread to the West Coast. Right, just because actually there's not a large enough Fujianese population on the West Coast for them to need to use the term probably because right. obviously there's a lot of Fujianese in New York. I, I think a big part of it, and tell me if you agree with me or not, is that the Vietnamese people are mostly located on the West Coast and most of the AZN slings, I would say, come from the Vietnamese community because the only one that really sticks out in my mind that's been created in the last 20 years that has spread to other Asians is Doma. Yeah. Do and uh, you know. Kevin Wynn. Those are some, and those are obviously more Vietnamese based. Jennifer Tran. Yeah, Jennifer Tran. So I would say this. Here's the reason why I think Southern California, because it has the most Asian Americans. Um, it's also the West Coast. So they've always had this more like kind of beachy, go easy, like, kind of like culture in uh, the SoCal Asian culture, we, we kind of know. I mean, I don't need to describe it. You guys know what I'm talking about. And I think that plus the population, plus the social media presence. And because media is based in LA for the most part, like Hollywood and social media especially is now based in California, then I think that now SoCal Asians even have almost in a way as much narrative power as they've ever had right 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 but a lot of people are saying that maybe the creation of slang seems like it's really slowed down the past like decade or mm. something like there have been very few terms that have entered the asian american lexicon yeah you know for me though you have to have a need for the slang because the slang needs to be used to describe something kind of complicated but to simplify it like abg and fob you know because then what do you use instead of fob? Fob, you kind of know what they mean. Well, but you got to say, like, I guess recently arrived, first generation immigrant. Asian yeah, <laughs> like, you know, coming from overseas. So uh, I think Kevin Wynn is hilarious that you just say the Kevin Wynn name and everybody knows what they're talking about. Right, right, right. So what even constitutes as Asian American slang? And like, 
how long does it have to be used for it to like firmly have its place in Asian America? Because if you look at a lot of uh, Spanish slang in the Latino American world, Andrew, they have chola, changa, which is more of Puerto Rican in Miami, paisa. They have like a lot of terms that are just uh, used to describe like different types of Mexican Americans or within the Puerto Rican community. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I felt like those they seem like they have more sticking power because it seems like a lot of Asians are constantly saying, well, I'm not familiar with Asian terms or Asian slang. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know how long it takes, man. I just think there has to be a wide reason to use it. There just has to be a really strong reason to use it. And I guess like to describe the ABG aesthetic, which is so stands out in the Asian community, ABG was like the best term to use. Right. It just makes sense. Easy to say oh, too. I've seen some girls now uh, get called Douyin girls. Ah, and that, that's going to go on to one of my later points about a lot of this new slang terms are just going to come from Asia. Right. Um, let's review some of the words that sort of went out of style from our video eight years ago. They got a million views, Andrew. Banana Twinkie. Do you hear anybody use these terms anymore? Yeah, I think this term is not used as often. I think this is definitely on the 40-year-old and up crowd, which are, is not super it, heavy it, on it, social media. Is it just comparing things to like fruits and, and like snacks? Because nobody yeah. even eats Twinkies in America anymore. Yeah. Uh, I actually read something, Andrew, that said the term Oreo, which was used in the black community to just describe a white acting black guy, is also no longer used. Yeah, because I think like a lot of people didn't even want to proudly call themselves a Twinkie and a banana. Like, I remember when I was younger, people would call me a banana. But I was just like, I don't really think I'm white. I'm not trying to be white. What are you talking about? Like, I'm, I'm a mixture of other cultures too, you know? Right. And I'm like, and then people would say, oh, you're bruised banana or whatever. This is like, or you're like, you know what I mean? And then you're like, okay, a little bit black on the inside, mostly white. Oh, like, dude, like, I think uh, people didn't want to say that for themselves anymore. So they uh, stopped saying those well, things. Well, this is what Chad GPT said. It said it uh, is less frequently used in part due to evolving discussions around race and identity. Yeah. Because it's just not that simple. And just a lot of people didn't want to call themselves a Twinkie. All right. All right. What about this term from eight years ago, Andrew? Yappy. Yeah. Wong, Wong Fu made a whole series called Yappy about the PMC, professional managerial class Asians, J. Crew, Banana Republic, you know, yeah. Berkeley Asians, Dude, consultants. And we've stuff. been using this term. And the thing is, I think this term sticks, actually, in my opinion, because there are still a lot of yappies. It's a real thing. It's just describing but a real thing. Do the yappies have to refer to themselves as yappies? No, no, I don't I don't think a lot of yappies will refer to themselves as yappies, but it's it's I think it's a good I think it's a useful term. It's a good term, but I didn't see its usage wildly increase or decrease. I would say the yappy pretty much stayed pretty steady. Hoppa. Some people are saying that this increased in popularity. Possibly. I've seen other words like mixy, uh, halfy, but hapa is particularly the Asian one. All right. What do you think about Blasian and Wasian indicating what the other half mix is? I think that's okay if they want to. I mean, to be I honest. I see Blasian a lot more. I don't see a lot of people embrace the term Wasian. I've I, heard that though. I think that actually Wasian is one of those terms that people started using in Australia and Britain more. That's how I feel about it because- there's this one stand-up comedian named Phil Wong, who's half white, half think Taiwanese from London, and he always said Wasian. Right, he's always like, "I'm Wasian." Right. Yeah, and I think the term Wasian, it actually comes from outside of America. I think that's yeah, my personal I, I, opinion. I just feel like, yeah, p people in America rarely use it, but I've heard I, some they more may have different head. connotations around whiteness and stuff like that in other places right. for sure. Uh, Andrew, A Z N. What happened to the term, man? Nobody's using it anymore. It's a great term. I like the term, man. Well, in my opinion, AZN, it just refers to a lot of like enclave culture. Dude, AZN is describing the whole umbrella culture that launched Kevin Wins and ABGs. To me, that's, but, AZN is the overarching. But why do people think it's cringe to use the term AZN, but then they're still referring to the all the silos underneath AZN? I don't know, man. Like, Sticky Keys is gone, though. Would you yeah, agree? Yeah. Sticky Keys is absolutely gone. Nobody types like that anymore. Some people said that the term fob is not even that popular anymore. Agree or disagree? Nah, man. I think that's a great term. And I don't even mean it in a negative way, man. I just said, I'll... Dude... It's not Well, how bad. is he supposed to describe somebody who's not like an American passport holder who just recently came Dude, over? Right? I just don't think it should be taken as offense unless it's said offensively. Any word can be offensive if you say it with the wrong tone. That's true. Um, 
they said that Asian turned into Asian American, turned into AA, uh, API, turned into AAPI. Now it is AANHPI. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call this a slang, but yeah, it's like a political thing. Um, all right, Andrew, let's just get into some new words. We mentioned it earlier, Andrew. Number one, my number one pick, new word for the Asian American dictionary, doma. Doma. Uh, I would say usually the people who say this, they don't have to be Vietnamese, but they probably have to have a lot of like Viet or Southeast Asian friends. The Asian streets of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and it, it is funny. It's like a goofy thing to say. I think when people say it, they don't actually mean it like, with hate, they're just saying like, right. oh man. But, but does it really count if it's just literally a word from Asia that oh, Viet's are famous for saying, but that you know Viet's, they kick it with everybody and they're so out there. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, what do you got next up? Uh, I've heard some Korean terms amongst non-Korean Asian girls using like Opa, Nuna. I think these are girls who like hang out in K-Town a lot they, and they're not no, Korean. You know what I've seen? I agree with you. Uh, it was very common even 10 years ago to see Korean girls speak like words or phrases of Korean with each other out when they were like hanging out with each other. But I've seen non-Korean girls start to speak Korean to their Korean friends. Yeah, if you have, if you have like more than half of your friends are Korean and I think especially girls do this. I don't think the guys who have Korean friends are as quickly to adopt this because the terms sound more cuter. It's cuter if a girl What's says more Opa, like noon, like it's noon, egg yo, right? Yeah, eggyo. Yeah, eggyo. It's like co the the Korean uh, kawaii, you know. So it's like cute. So that's why I think like yeah, I think more girls use. What it. do you think about kawaii? Did that increase or decrease now that I guess Korean culture has sort of supplanted Japanese culture a little bit for the uh, for a certain crowd? I feel like people use the word kawaii like kawaii. Sorry, that's probably more of the tonal. I, I don't know exactly how to say it. Sorry, but like. Uh, I think more more people are using it actually, and just people. It's almost becoming a word just in culture, maybe not even in the Asian world. I right, think, like a white educated white writer yeah, would use yeah, it. Yeah, anybody who's just consumed some Japanese culture. Oh yeah, Korean heart fingers. Yeah, a lot of people use them. All right, somebody was saying that I noticed that everybody is uh, typing out the abbreviations for interracial couples now, like W M A F A M W F, and like you know, et cetera, et cetera. Would you say that those terms like 10 years ago were unknown? Or those a acronyms didn't make any sense. Or AMXF, meaning like Asian male with a nondescript uh, non Asian interracial couple. Right, right, right. Halfies is still popular, I guess, because there's a lot more mixed kids. And then, of course, like we said, Andrew, Kevin Wynn and Jennifer Tran. I think those are the newest terms. I think those are the newest terms. And it's so funny because they're just real regular names. Oh, I just thought of one Rave Bay. Rave Bay. You think it comes from Asians? I see Asians use it the most. Yeah, yeah. I think Asians use I think Asians use Rave Bay the most. I'm not sure if it comes from the Asian community, but it might. I maybe. think Asians use uwu the most too. Oh, uwu. Yeah. yeah. The UWU. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Um, anyway, this let's get into the comments section, Andrew. This turned into a big old ABG debate. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess. ABGs are just the thing that like everybody has on their mind. It's kind so, of the anchor. It's kind of the anchor. Let's be honest. No, dude, people will get fired up about this term and yeah. like who should use it? Who shouldn't use it? Is it just an aesthetic? Do they have to pay homage to like the gangster roots of this thing? Protect the term, ABG! Protect it! Right. Um, I think one of the interesting points that people were talking about, and this is like some deep ABG knowledge, Andrew, is they were saying that ABGs were always Viet or Chinese Viet, mm. or like uh, Chinese Cambodian. Well, I think that's so, where it comes from originally. No, that was the core. Yes, core that was of the, the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Uh, it, and then, um, oh, people are saying that FOB has to really become part of culture because there was a TV show called FOB, and there was also a TV show called ABC. So that's how you know that those terms are like burned into the Asian American lexicon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there was millions of dollars put behind producing shows that are named after these terms, FOB, ABC. And also there was a pilot for a TV show based off of ABG, but it was called Asian Gangster Girl or something. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually use the ABG term, but it was pretty much about ABGs, but it didn't take off anyways. Right. Somebody was saying that there's hyper-regional Asian-American slang that just didn't go national. For example, Andrew, we're talking about how FJ in New York represents, you know, Fujinese. Yeah, if you say FJ on the West Coast, people don't know what you're talking about because I'm not saying there's no Fujinese on the West Coast. There's just not a 
collective community out there. I remember growing up, sometimes the Filipinos would call somebody Ilipino if they were Ilocano and not Tagalog speakers. Mm. But that, and they were like, the Ilocanos, I guess, like had their own culture that was like a little bit different. Yeah. So that was something that also never reached outside of that world. So where do I think the future of Asian American slang is going to come from? I think that actually in, a, in an effort to keep with the culture, I think a lot of Asian groups are going to adopt and start using just words from their own language that are easy to say and just going to adopt that into their language. So, for example, like Chinglish like a mixture of speaking Chinese and English has been around for a long time. It's been very popular in Hong Kong, especially for decades, right? Where there's always been a lot of English speakers and a lot of Chinese with Canto and Mandarin as well. So I'm like saying like, when I, like I think that a lot of these words like Doma and like, um, Opa, Saranghe or something yeah, like that. Or, or like, just anything that's a cute word that's easy to say, like, you know, uh, uh, that are fun to say, like, I don't know. I feel like everybody knows what piao liang means, you know, like, ni han piao liang. Like, or ni hao, heard it. right? Yeah, ni hao, for sure, everybody's heard it. So I think, like, it's going to come from Asia a lot because that's where most of the culture is. So we have the culture, billions of people. Right, so you're saying there's going to be less ASEAN culture moving forward like there was 20 years ago. There was a ton of ASEAN culture that really people in Asia had no idea what you were talking about either. But now it's going to become a mixture of stuff emanating from asia yeah i mean not to say that there will be no more new asian american terms because i think kevin Wynn is a new one that popped up and has kind of stuck in the right, last like people like, in asia wouldn't know what you're talking about yeah no like even people outside of the asian community don't fully know what you mean when you say that so um that's such an internal t uh term so i don't know we gotta we gotta tap the vietnamese though to be honest the viets are sort of the anchor for this it seems like for asian culture like i'm just i'm just saying what is true I'm not even, they, you know, that's just true, right? Like the Viet, whatever you consider the Vietnamese community, they seem to produce the most Asian slang terms. So what's up, Viet's? What we got next? Hey guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Where are all the Asian American slang terms? Which ones have stuck around? Which ones have gone away? And which ones do you think could enter the Asian American dictionary? Protect lexicon? all the ABGs and the ABVs. Protect them. All right, you guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.